Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 272 for Monday, September 21st, last day of summer, I think, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. And yes, I have confirmed that uh, Tuesday, September 22nd is the autumnal equinox. So, yeah, it's the last day of summer. It's cold here, though, here in Durham, in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Still nice here in Central California. It's Paul Kent. I mean, I say it's cold. It got down to the 40s the other night. You know, That's cold, man. Yeah, it is cold. <laughs> we, we, um, Lisa and I noticed that uh, a band that we like, a band called Soul Lamond, which is, um, well, it's a keyboard player. And it's, an or, it's a duo. It's an organist and a drummer. The organist uh, actually used to play is a guy named Ray Pachkowski who used to play in a band uh, with our bass player in Fling Burke. Uh, years ago, and we actually play one of his tunes, a tune called "Get Back Home." But um, it's it's Ray and a drummer named Russ Lawton that play like you know funky fusiony sort of or organ drum grooves all night. It's sort of like sort of like um, Jimmy Smith's organ trio kind of thing. It's just you know Ray's playing the the bass notes with his left hand, so it's just the two of them. But the two those two guys are also known as the drummer and organist in the Trey Anastasio band. So, um, but, uh, but we saw that they were playing about three hours away over in Stovermont outdoors, socially distanced at a cider brewery. Do you call it a brewery for cider, Paul? I don't know. Whatever. Why not? You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and so we thought, well, you know, we don't have kids, but we don't have anything to do. Like, let's go. <laughs> so we went, so it was, it was actually really nice, but it was cold. It was like, we had to grab blankets out of the car. <laughs> But, uh, but that was fine. We had them. So there was, it was good. And we had warm cider to drink either with, uh, like booze or not booze. So it was, you know, it was good. So, Sounds like a nice day. It actually, it was quite pleasant. It was really nice kind of going for a road trip and like, you know, doing a thing that might approximate, you know, what we did in the before times. So, yeah, we had, uh, some house guests and so we went out and explored a couple of wineries nice. and sure enough, there were, um, solo guitar players doing their thing at this stuff. So, and you know what, they are like more than social distance. So the wineries in order to be able to have their outdoor tasting rooms, they have to comply with a bunch of stuff and they, you know, right. they don't want to get shut down. So they do it. And then this guitar player, you know, he was much more than social distance. There was at least in the one winery that we went to was, you know, like there would, there could be no concern about that. He didn't come into contact with people. That's great. His tip jar was sufficiently out you know, away from him. So it was, uh, you, know, you know, it, it, it brings up the conversation, right? I want to have this conversation. Yes. And the conversation is this. We're, we're where we are. Nothing magic is going to happen in three months. Probably nothing magic is going to happen in six months. I just read this huge um, interview with Springsteen and Rolling Stone because he has a new album coming out. And he was talking about, you know, usually our, our formula is, you know, we put out an album that we tour to support it. Yeah. So we've been doing it for 50 years. He goes, our tour was supposed to, you know, the album's coming out in October. The tour was supposed to start in the spring. Um, I don't think 2021 we're going to tour. I don't know. 2022 might be 2023. So, yeah. so he at his level looking at when things are going to open up. I, th uh, I think is he is at a uh in terms of timing, he is at a greater disadvantage than those of us that play much smaller venues to much smaller crowds. I, I mean, I, I think well, it's a different problem. I, it's a I different problem. Saying. Yeah. I yeah. want to have this conversation yeah. there. So let's put a, let's, let's put a pin in this because I, I, I think this is worthy of, of a, a much deeper thing to explore. There were two cool things that came up in, uh, in the last week here that I wanted to share and make sure we share. The first came from listener Brad, uh, in response to last week's episode, we I, I mentioned, you know, and 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 threw out the idea that maybe Facebook isn't the right place for us to be streaming. You know, I equated it to the sports bar, sports bar versus the rock club of like a Twitch or something platforms <laughs> that are built for streaming. And and one of my comments was, you know, the, the a great example is I don't have a Facebook app on my TV. Uh, it turns out I do in the, you know, in the category of uh, who knew not me, evidently you. So uh, Brad and, <laughs> and many other people pointed out that there is indeed a Facebook 
uh, watch app is what it's called, but it's not for your your wristwatch. It's to watch videos on Facebook, uh, and they do have you know an Apple TV, a Amazon Fire TV, Android. Uh, they've got Xbox. It's available for Samsung TVs. It's not available for an LG TV, which is what, it, what I happen to have. But but suffice to say that uh, I was wrong. I learned something new here. The uh, there is this Facebook Watch app. If, from what most of you said. It didn't really change your your reaction to my to my viewpoint that that you know it still sort of stands that Facebook's probably not the place for this, but the app does exist. So maybe someday, maybe it will be the place for it. So thanks for uh, for sharing that. Thanks, and, Brad. Yeah, and then Dan, uh, listener Dan East, sent me uh, a link to this app called Mixing Station by David Schumann for the iPhone, and. It's, you know, I, I was saying just on last week's show how I make sure that I have either on my phone or iPad or, or really both the apps for every mixer that I know about, uh, whether I've seen it before or not. I just make them make sure they're on there. I keep them up to date so that when I encounter a mixer to gig, it's already there. Well, Mixing Station is sort of a universal app at least to control Allen and Heath, Behringer and Midas mixers. So and Behringer wow. and Midas's apps are interchangeable for the most part. So it's really just Allen and Heath and then the Behringer Midas family. But so he, Personas is still its own thing. Personas is still its own thing. Uh, Mackie is still its own thing. But but this, you know, it, it supports the Behringer Wing, the X32 and M32, the X-Air and MR18, the Allen and Heath Q series, the Allen and Heath uh, Gold GLD series, and the Soundcraft um, and impact. So really it, it goes, there's, there's three. So that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I definitely put this on my phone right away. As soon as Dan told me about it, it was like, Oh, yep. I'll keep that too. It's just, you know, a backup, whatever, or maybe it, you know, maybe I like the interface best. And once I use it and then I, I go with that. So anyway, thank you, Dan, for sending that in. That's, that's, that's the geeky kind of stuff that man, the day you need that tool, is you know is an important day to have it so free app free yeah yeah there are in-app purchases and i i'm not entirely sure where those come from um but it, yes it the app itself is free so you can download it and put it on your phone and and uh, get there so excellent yeah yeah so so yeah let's let's have this conversation to circle back here about what what are our like and 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 there's no wrong going? There's no wrong answers here, right? Like, but what are your plans? What, you know, if, if I, I tend to agree with what you were saying that either you and or, or Bruce were saying where, you know, there's no magical, this just evaporates in three months. Now, that being said, if this just evaporates in three months, I'll happily eat all my words in my hat sure. and, and jump for, for joy. I would pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not going to, I would pay for it. I'm not going to plan for it. Right. So well, let's just frame it right. Like, yeah. so, you know, it seems like it's out there. It still seems like, you know, from the Johns Hopkins site, you know, we're still hovering around a thousand deaths a day going on and on yep. the culture and this, our society, people have made their decisions about how, how much sheltering in place you're going to do. I would, I would bet for most people, the line of tolerable risk is starting to move. People go to the grocery store now and you know, that type of thing. So, Life is is going to move on. Time is going to move on. Um, you know, even if there is a magic vaccine in January or March, you know, making there enough of that to get enough people immunized and distributed um, is going to take a while you know, and lots of different moving targets. About that. And again, there's no guarantee that there's any reality to a right. vaccine, right. you know, coming in three to six months. Right. So or ever. Know, like, I mean, or uh, ever. yeah, there's hope, but, but as I become fond of saying recently, not fond, but I've, as I've found myself saying recently, hope is not a strategy, right? Hope is not a strategy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh. So. Yeah. So, you know, time is going to move on um, and you see time moving on around you. You see some people just saying, listen, I'm going to move my bar because nothing's going to change tomorrow. And I don't know when it's going to change and I can't just sit around and wait. So I got to figure out, you know, what works for me. And again, you started this conversation in a great way months ago when you said, I have these two criteria, And if they pass those first one of my questions about, you know, their process, and then I can get through the second one, like, would I have my family there? 
I now have gotten my process for figuring out what works for you. For me. Right? But that's my path. That, and that was this. really useful. But yeah. that's it was very useful. And now actually, you know, remember, I'm the one that's saying, don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. Totally. And, the, and the flaw in that thinking was that if enough people were part of the solution, we'd have a solution. But I think the flaw is that everybody's rolling their own ethics on this. Everybody's rolling their own, you know, morality on this. And we are bouncing along and are going to be bouncing along worse. I mean, again, there's large parts of society that don't believe it's real. There's large parts of society that don't believe it's a big deal, you know, and, and they're all out there and they're making their decisions. They're going to the beach, they're getting together. They're happy to go to bars. If there are bars they're happy to get together with their friends. I mean, you know, it, that's where we are and it's slowly fading out of the news that we have to be, you know, as other things take its place in the news. So, yep. you know, it's, it's the consciousness that we have about the problems. And again, there's a thousand people a day dying. So as a musician, I think my line has moved. Um, and it, and it's moved as I shared last week to talk to my bandmates and, you know, certainly I use this for my own solo decisions as well, but it's like, what would it take for you to feel comfortable to say yes? And I can tell you in the house rockers with 10, 11 guys to consider, um, there's not uniformity on that. As I can imagine, there wouldn't be in a three piece band or a four piece band either, but well, in my it's, band, it's easier. I mean, when you, when you, the, the less people you have, the easier it is, but, but all it takes is one holdout, right? Like it, it, we, eat, as I was saying before, you know, we each have our, we each find our path to get through this. Hopefully we each find our path to get through this. You know, I, I, I hope that no one is feeling like paralyzed by, you know, the, the anxiety and the, the hugeness of this, although it's certainly understandable if you are right. Like that, that's, it's not, that's not a judgment. It's just a hope. Um, but we each find our path through this and each member of, if with me, each member of every band I'm in has found a different path. Now, now some paths are more in line than others, but, but as my friend Billy said, uh, you know, we can each be on different paths and still sort of walk the same journey. And, and, and bitter pills is, is one of the bands that we're finding ways of getting together. You know, I have my, everybody needs to be tested sort of uh, barometer for, for things. And that's proven difficult in different bands for various different reasons. And one band that I, I play with, it's like the political reasons <coughs> stop that conversation immediately, which yeah. was informative and fascinating. It was like, okay, fine. No, no problem. Again, no judgment. Just like this doesn't work for me and that's okay. Um, yeah. with, with bitter pill, it, it wasn't a, a political thing or it isn't. It was that, you know, a few of the people live down in Massachusetts where getting tested is not nearly as easy. It is here in New Hampshire. And so we had, uh, we have two, believe it or not, two sold out shows coming up on, on Saturday night this week out outdoors. They call them the loading dock series at this, this, uh, club called three S in Portsmouth. And it's great. We're looking forward to doing them. And I said, okay, I want to find a way. And as you mentioned a few weeks ago, you know, I, I spent some time and some money and sourced some, you know, do it yourself at home rapid tests. And mm -hmm. so one of the guys was like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get a test, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it ahead of our rehearsal on Sunday. How do you feel about getting together? And I said, you know what? I want to get together. Uh, you know, he's, it's not like he's against being tested. It's just the logistics of it are not working for him. Yeah. And, uh, and so I said, would you be okay, you know, taking a, a test if I bring it with me? And he's like, absolutely. Now the precursor to that conversation was what else have we all been doing? And I mean, I asked that of him, but, but I also shared it of me. We all shared it of each other. And I knew giving him the test was likely unnecessary because, you know, he's been laying low at home. He hasn't been doing a whole lot. You know, he's being safe. He mm -hmm. follows all the protocols, all that stuff. Right. And so at that point, it was like, OK, cool. Well, as we all know, any of us could still be carrying this thing without any symptoms whatsoever. So let's get together to do the test. No great surprise. His test came back negative, you know, and, and everything was fine. But um, but, you know, like that, that's how that's working in 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 one band in, in, in fling, it's, it, it's been very interesting. We have, um, there's five of us in that band and there we have had and turned down several opportunities, uh, to play. There's some, 
And it's for different reasons, but you know, you have to have everybody on the same page in order to say yes. Right. And some of the reasons have been, you know, we haven't played in a while. I don't know that this is a good idea. Um, some of it has been like, we would be okay getting together in one of our driveways and playing, but not getting together somewhere else outdoors and playing. And, and mm. I, and, and I, I, I say this without truly without judgment. I just like that part of it didn't, didn't make sense to me. It was like, well, if we're willing to do it here, why not there, you know, and, and have an audience and that would be okay. Um, so that part's been frustrating because again, without five yeses, it's a no. And, and that's, you know, that's how it goes. We're, we're all friends with each other. We are all tolerant of the fact and accepting of the fact that, you know, this is a pandemic and it's our first one. And the anxiety manifests itself in a lot of different ways, but it doesn't mean that the process also doesn't bring some frustration with it. I, I, I'm going to pause it here because really what, what we want to think about is the pandemic is here. Um, it's not going away tomorrow. Right. We know a lot more about it today than we did on March 1st. Yeah. Um, we don't know everything yet, but we know a lot more about it. Um, we have doctors telling us, you know, good behaviors and good things like that. Sure. And again, time, time is going. So I would frame it like if you have a band or you're in a band, what's your plan? Are you talking actively about how to keep your band's feet moving? So, so you can f either find things that are appropriate to do, whether, it, whether it's a driveway rehearsal or, you know, a gig backyard gig in the right format or whatever it might be front yard gig, you know, for neighbors, people were doing that around here fairly soon after the lockdown started just going in their front driveway yeah. and letting neighbors, you know, pull up chairs out in the street or stay in their own homes uh, and, and do things. But I think the point is, it's likely something we're going to be battling in different ways for quite a while. And um, it's not going to be a hundred percent safe the day they announce a vaccine. And it's not going to be a hundred percent safe three months after they announce a vaccine. And so the likeliness is it's here. Um, you know, where I was coming from was if everybody would just stay home for four weeks, we will have a huge lead, you know, to getting this under control. That's not going to happen. Right. Right. And so my, you know, my somewhat self-serving interest in saying, I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem, but the, the world is speaking how it wants to handle this. There's, there's enough people out there that are saying, listen, we're going to go on with life. We're going to go on with life. And, you know, we're going to kind of roll our own ethics in a world that's made up of decision-making like that as a musician and as a band and as a band leader, how do you, what do you do? And I, do you do? and I think the first thing, like any business endeavor, have a plan, you know, know, know where you want to go. And so as I shared last week, it was like first getting my guys who, you know, in June and July, they were like, nope, we got to wait it out. Well, what, what does waited out mean now? So now the question is, what does it take to get to yes as a band? I'm a little, um, you know, kind of like you of the personalities of my band, some, Everybody says uh, misplaying. Some guys say, nope, it, you know, this is, this is a time where you have to sacrifice and just stay home until it's, and, and, and there's no, there's no end to that sentence. No until, middle ground. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's, it, that's the, it, I, I can only share my own personal journey through this. Right. But I, I found myself months ago saying exactly that like uh, you know once once this is over right but but yeah. i wasn't defining what over meant but i did notice that i was saying no to everything and i'm not just talking about music i was saying no to every opportunity i had to leave my property right and i realized wait a minute is this what i do i want to be here a year from now like i started doing the math on the, exactly like you did like as, wait when does this end uh oh wait it doesn't you know, not anytime soon. Okay. Am I okay? Never leaving my property again. Like, uh, that doesn't sound healthy, you know, and my family also was part of this conversation, you know, like right. you're not, you're not making healthy choices, Dave. And, and it's like, right. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. So to me, the easiest thing was to start thinking about future questions. Like, don't worry. The thing I said no to today, it's a no, but where, and when and what, and that's kind of how I came up with my, my, you know, criteria for gigs, right? What are the questions that I have to be able to say yes to? And it was way easier for me 
to come up with those questions and my desired answers without having an opportunity against which I was actively comparing them. Right. You know, it was like, all right, that's what the scenario is going to have to look like. Great. Now, when the next question comes in, I know how to process it, you know, and and it allowed me to be a little objective about it. And I think with your band, if you, if you're having, you know, this friction, I think that's the way to approach it. Now I've tried this, you know, this is not a new line of thinking for me. I've been, I've been on this bandwagon for a few months. I've tried this line of thinking with some of the, with like, you know, with fling and, and, um, and some of the other bands and it's, it's worked okay with, with some of the other ones, like I said, bitter pill and, and monkey fist and, and fling it. It's, um, it's not. And, and I don't, you know, but Fling's been in a weird spot, as listeners know. Our Aaron, our keyboard player, kind of moved far enough away a few years ago that it started to create some uh, logistical issues getting together. And and we would still do gigs and stuff, but it was definitely okay. This is like we have to make exceptions to our lives to make this happen. Some of us more than others. And, and so now with pandemic, it's like, yeah, maybe it's like just not worth making those exceptions. There's a healthy dose of that factoring in to this here. And, and so, yeah. you know, so it's not just the pandemic, but it's like, you know, th there's the straw and, and the pandemic is a pretty hefty straw on the camel's back. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know where that goes, but, but it's frustrating because th two of us in, in fling, not me are being tested weekly because of their jobs. They work at, at the university of New Hampshire, which is testing all students twice a week and all faculty uh, once a week. I'm basically, because I'm able to, I'm on a once a week plan. Now I can get tested for free. I, I don't even have to use my own tests. I can just go to the local Rite Aid. It, you know, it takes, it's an hour out of my week to drive there, get tested and drive home. Um, and it's nice to get out of the house. Uh, a nice little drive, you know? <laughs> and, and so I'm on the once a week plan and, you know, with that comes a lot of freedom. And I, jo I I created this once a week plan for myself after seeing what the two guys in Fling were doing. And, and we've got the three of us have gotten together for like little porch jams and stuff, which has been nice. Um, but but I, I, I do recommend this because then when an opportunity presents itself, it's not like, all right, how are we going to can everybody does everybody have time? Like you're just doing this recurring what's being called in the in the the you know medical industry surveillance testing right where you're just doing it often enough that all you have to do is if things if you wind up with a positive it's like okay what have i done in the last you know few days like wh who have i encountered who do i need to tell where did this come from like that all of that but just this regular thing and then that way if it's like hey you want to get together on saturday uh yes i do okay when was everybody's last test and what have we all done since then? And and it's a, it's just a way easier conversation than, oh, crap, I got to like scramble and find a sure. testing center and, all, you know, just make it part of your routine. And and then we're in really good shape. I mean, the, the schools that are doing surveillance testing like that um, are, are really able to keep a handle on this. And so I feel like like you, you know, part of this truly is I hate the word political. But it is political for me about the virus, not not, you know, left or right or anything like that. But like, look, if we were all being surveillance tested, we have a lot more flexibility and freedom in our in our decision making process because we have a lot more information. And and so that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be part of the solution on this. But it's also selfishly part of my own solution of just yeah. knowing where I am. But it like if you can get everybody in your band doing that, man, like that's a whole, that's a game changer to me. That is. And, and even in my band, you know, the general consensus was and this after a bunch of discussion, sure. the concern was not about the other guys on stage that, that just about everybody in the band trusted that the guys in the band were being for, would, would be forthright about any potential exposure or, or, you know, risk that they're taking. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, again, that even in that it's tough because, you know, because you don't know. Where, Right. You don't know. Right. He, uh, yeah, you don't know. You don't know where the people you come in contact with, who they've been in contact with. And, and that's why, you know, when somebody, because somebody asked me, they're like, oh, don't you just trust your bandmates? It's like, well, no. I mean, as we said last week, we've had what, half a dozen of you write in and say, yeah, we trusted each other. And then we all wound up with COVID. It wasn't about 
not trusting each other. It was that you don't know whether you're bringing this to the party or not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and so the trust is like you said, believing with people when they say, yes, I've been tested and this is what I've done since then, you, you know, and having that, and it doesn't, depending on your scenario, it doesn't necessarily need to be a weekly thing. Uh, I think, you know, the more time that goes between tests, the more opportunity you have to wind up, you know, being exposed and all that. But, but if you're, being mindful of it, like getting tested regularly also puts it top of mind. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. Like I should be, I, I got to remember to, I need to, you know, like those things will just happen. Well, that's easily. the gold standard for, for creating trust, right? That's, that's it. That's ultimately. Right. Yeah. And you know, the, you know, those self tests are, are incredible and hopefully there'll be more cheaper, more available of these yep. types of things. And that's, that's likely the life we are leading towards anyway. So at some point in time, you're going to have to trust those self-tests, if, you know, because, you know, yes. just, again, we, we started in a place of fear, assuming the doctors would let us know how to get our way through this, right? And in that process, you know, there was the bumbling of, well, don't wear masks because we need all the PPE for the first line people, right? right? Which turned into, you should wear a mask, which turned into, but you told me not to wear a mask, but then we're like, no, but that was, yeah. so we had supply was, for the, right. That was, there was, so, there was, there was a bit of manipulation things. at first. We're sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, and there's just confusion. And so the, the reality is, is that this is likely the path that we are all walking together is yeah. that there's not going to be a magic golden door where it's suddenly, you know, beautiful outside and it's safe for everybody to go do their thing. So you got to figure it out. And, you know, the gigs are starting to, show up, you know, there, I've seen restaurants who are, you know, doing again in California, we're going to have a longer outdoor period of time. I don't have any idea what happens when it starts getting cold and rainy here. Tents I, and heaters I'll tell you are possible here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you, don't, true. You, you, yeah. you can't even do tents and heaters. Though, we right? can do tents and heaters probably until Halloween. I mean, re realistically here, depend I mean, you know, things got down the other night, but they're supposed to be in the 80s again this week. Like, we'll have this sort of, you know, occasional return of summer um, for a little while. But but yeah, I mean, then it's just going to be cold and, and tents and heaters don't don't solve the problem. So. Yeah. Right. So you're, you're, you have five months ahead of you where it's not, it's not going to be too likely, but, yeah. but, um, you know, California will have a little, you know, breaks through the winter and, you know, there's more opportunities for that stuff. But you, I think the first thing is, you know, we have to grasp the reality of where we are and what's where we are likely going, which right. is, you know, it's going to be this rollout of, of uh, ethical comfort. Uh, and that's kind of what you got to do. And if you, you know, testing is huge. That ab absolutely, that like we said, the gold standard for trust is going to be testing. Yep. Writing a writer and, you know, whether it's a, a little writer you give to promoters. And, and I should take a little aside here. I did talk to one promoter. Ah. Um, just I, I asked him, you know, what are you putting in your writers for COVID specific, you know, clauses now? He goes, well, you know, we haven't really gotten that far. But I can tell you that I really think that bands, you know, should stay in the game in some way. Stream something if you can, yeah. you know, get a new promo video done if you can. But just do something to keep yourself in mind because literally everything's shaking now. You know, people have very, very short memories. And, you know, when wholesale opening up happens and there's, you know, more gigs, you know, it, just because you had a certain place in people's memory because you were a hot band a year ago, it doesn't really last that long. And so his, his advocacy was keep your feet moving, which is really what is kind of guiding a lot of what I'm talking about here. I'm not prepared to let 22 years of work, you know, just kind of, you know, slip into the cracks here. So what are we going to do? So I like that. I like that, that idea of keep your feet moving and it, it doesn't have to be playing gigs all the time. I mean, like here gigs are going to dry up, uh, you know, because of logistics. Like I'm, I, at the moment I am still comfortable playing indoor gigs at like the, the Seacoast rep theater. They're doing the distancing the right way. The, they're mandating masks the right way. All of that. Now, if more science comes out that, that changes my opinion and makes me realize, Oh crap, like we got really lucky. Uh, we need to stop that. Then I would stop that, y you know, but mm -hmm. at, at the moment, that's one venue, w one where I would feel comfortable playing indoors. Um, I can't think of any others other than 
if, for example, you, you know, like a 3000 seat arena opens up or something and says, okay, we're going to let 500 people in. Like that would be another one where, okay, there's more ventilation than there is people. Uh, you know, the ceilings are tall enough, all of those things. And then of course, is everybody I'm involved with getting tested regularly, which, which yeah. at the rep, everybody is. So, you know, like, like that I would consider now those gigs aren't always my favorite kind of gigs. I mean, some of them are, most of them quite frankly are not. So there is the, the factor of like, am I going to play just for the sake of saying I went and played a gig, even though I'm, you know, solving math problems on the drums in a closet somewhere like probs, not, <laughs> you know, like those types of theater gigs just don't, uh, don't appeal to me at this point in my life. Now give me another six months. I might change my mind. Right. Right. right? right. But, but at the moment I would probably still say no to those. Uh, I mean, if somebody needed me to fill in or something, of course I'd do it, but I wouldn't take a, you know, five weekend run or something like that, you know, where I'm giving up every Thursday to Sunday for, you know, to solve drum, solve math problems on the drums in the closet. So, yeah, I mean, but, but it doesn't have to be gigs. Like, like you said, you could be filming a video with your band. You could be writing songs and, and, if you as a band are tested and you have a rehearsal room where you are comfortable getting together, even indoors, like there's no rule that says you can't do that. In fact, the rules have sort of allow for that as long as you're all comfortable with each other doing that. And so, yeah. you know, I was talking to Billy the other day. I, Billy's a fantastic keyboard player in addition to being the, the bass player slash cellist in, uh, in bitter pill. But, um, you know, I was, I was, as I was watching Ray and, and, uh, and, and Russ play the other night, I was like, wait a minute, Billy and I could be doing something like this all summer. I've always yeah. liked the, you know, but it's like, it only means like, we only have to worry about two of us that yeah. I'm, I like, I could see allowing someone else into my studio that wasn't my family, you know, and I was like, wait, yeah. that could be good in December. So just opening the door to, and like you said, keep your feet moving. It might look very different than it did a year ago. But that's sort of how life is. So, so I'll tell you a couple of things, how I yeah. react to what you just said. Yeah, so, yeah man. There are um, a few good duos here. And, you know, someone play with drum machines or they play two tracks or something like that. Sure. Um, it's an interesting thing, whether that is a side casualty of COVID is that bands, because you just aren't, most bands aren't going to be able to get three, four, five, ten guys on the same page, smaller combos may get more prolific yeah you know as a as a as a byproduct of people dealing with this stuff yeah and so I, so that puts a little, little bit of a, a knot in my stomach right i'm determined to keep this band <laughs> yeah well i am i, no, you know, I get but, it I but get i would it. imagine i have 10 guys all thinking like maybe the exact same thing maybe, maybe they're like god i love the house rockers but but you know, we got to get 10 guys on the same page. I'm not hearing it and I got to do something. I'm a musician. So is a, is a smaller combo, maybe the way I should go. And then I get busy with something else and it creates yep. a whole different dynamic. So that's a bit of a challenge, but um, I think I, I think the other thing is reading the tea leaves. I would bet that when it gets warm again, let's just say next April or May. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say by that amount of time, the amount of restlessness, the amount of boredom, the amount of um, uh, just sheer economic need of businesses needing to do something. If they, if you make it through this winter, right? So I don't even understand, you know, all these restaurants that are at 10%, 20%, 50% capacity. That's not your business plan to run at 50%. If you open a restaurant with 50 tables and you can only have you know, anywhere from five to 25 of those tables going at a time. That wasn't your business plan. I don't know no. how many people are going to make it through a winter of, I, yeah, you know, no. I've got, I've got uh, uh, fr some friends of ours that have opened now two restaurants in the, during the pandemic. Um, so Amazing. Th yeah, but they're like, they know how to run a business. Like they know what they're getting themselves into there. <laughs> and they, I think they've got some capital, but your, your, your point stands like, this is yeah. not part of the business model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for any, any business that counts on crowds, it's not, you know, physical bodies being near each other. So I, I actually would bet that whatever is left standing but by the time the weather gets warm again, next spring, uh, there will be a large demand for music in different ways. And this whole, like I said, people, people will get more inventive about safety, more clever about safety, whether it's, you know, restaurants with outdoor booths that are isolated or whatever it may be, 
but there will be so much pent up demand after a year, you know, a total year of this type of stuff. Uh, there will be a lot of call for music. It may, may not be any different, a safety situation than we have right now, but I think people are just going to be worn down in the desire to get back to their lives and their attention spans is this as the most important thing going on in the, in the universe right now is probably going to wane. So I, I do think that come spring, there will be opportunities, you know, whether art and wine festivals are going to come back and figure out a socially distanced model for that. Again, you know, music where there is, um, you know, if you can do music for a thousand people, you can do music for 250 people socially distanced. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you know, we talked about this in the show when I said Red Rocks had closed, right? Turns out Red Rocks hasn't closed. Red Rocks is open. They're doing shows for, you know, it, I think Big Head Todd and the Monsters is playing this coming week. They had somebody else there this weekend. But but I think those first few shows were for 175 people, like versus 9,000. At Red Rocks. At Red Rocks, right. But it was also being, like, it was mostly set up to be streamed. And then it was like, okay, we're going to fit a very small number of people, you know, in into this this place. And let's see how it goes. Now, my guess is they'll be able to increase that number as they sort things out. Of course, they've already had a snowstorm in Colorado. Like there's literally a picture of Red Rocks from two weeks ago covered in snow. So that's not going to last through the winter. But but that idea, like you said, if you can fit 10,000 people, OK, well, can we do 1500? You know, like like let's figure it out. Well, and then this is the other thing is that it, it, as streaming becomes a a real and necessary part of a you know musician's business model now you know now the local bands you know can you local artists you know you're you're going to be competing with major touring artists on a much more regular basis will right. you be get be able to get as many people to tune into you you know tip to you and you know so that's a whole other you know aspect of things i know um one of the local venues here is trying to be proactive and they're trying to turn themselves into two two venues here have invested and put in some really nice switching equipment and cameras and audio equipment and you know they're turning themselves into streaming halls but uh, one of them has been sharing that they um, are subject to some really complicated um, uh, rights issues. I can only imagine, right? Because yeah. if you're a, you know, venues have always had to pay BMI and ASCAP based on the number of people that either right. are in the venue or can fit in the venue. And I mean, like, like uh, theaters are going through the same thing because they, when you, when you license a theater show, you license it for the number of seats that you have in your venue. Well, yeah. if you now want to stream that thing, like there is no provision for that in the contract. So it's a negotiation and it's a slow one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that this streaming thing opens it up. Uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I am, I am held hopeful again, hope's not a strategy, but I allow myself hope because it, you know, it, it, it triggers some dopamine and I like that. Uh, <laughs> but Mark Geiger was on the Bob Left Sets podcast. And if you don't subscribe to the Left Sets letter, pause this show or, or, or don't like you can keep going, but go. It will put a link in the show notes. Go and subscribe to the Left Sets letter. If you are interested in the music industry at all, Bob Left Sets is uh, an icon. He he's an attorney, but really he's just a personality that sort of knows everybody in the industry. He puts out this letter, what m m a few times a week, sometimes five times a week. It's his yeah. stream of consciousness thoughts, but the, the like his thoughts are good. Um, he has, he's very opinionated and he's okay with it. He's a, a new England native living in LA. So like, get him on the show. Oh, I'd love to get Bob on the show. I mean, it would, <laughs> it would be, it would be a fascinating experience experience to try and keep Bob on track. Uh, Bob yeah. would go on Bob's track and I love that about him, right? Like that's, that's what he's great at, but he, um, he also does a podcast, but the, the, one of the best parts about the letter is he publishes the, the replies that he gets via email and you see who else is reading this letter. Like it's not uncommon to see like Joe Walsh wrote this in or Elton John wrote this in like, mm -hmm. holy crap. But you also get some of those people that have like been in the trenches of the industry sharing these perspectives that, that are, that you just won't get anywhere else. So again, highly recommended. However, he had Mark Geiger uh, on the show. Now, Mark Geiger 
was the um, the the head of NME, I think, for a while, or head of um, um, Warner Music, for head of music at Warner for a while, uh, was an agent, found lots of different bands. Now, he co-founded Lollapalooza and Artist Direct and things like that. Um, but anyway, he, uh, he was on the show and talked about how he said he, he thinks it's going to be 2022 before the the like the touring industry can open back right. up and i don't think he's wrong uh, i don't like that he i think he's right but again there is hope here but he said you know he calls what we're currently in the germophobic economy right like you know we we're afraid of this thing uh in a general sense we've locked things down we're, we've limited our exposure all that stuff that this he calls the germophobic economy he says he sees it being slowly killed off and being replaced by the claustrophobia economy. And that's when everybody wants to get the heck out of their houses and go mm -hmm. to music shows and festivals and all that stuff. So like I am looking forward to, I think I said it at the beginning of this year before, you know, before all the, the disaster hit um, that I was looking forward to the roaring twenties. We may get an exceptionally roaring twenties. It just might only be like eight years of the twenties, not, not 10, but there you go. Sure. Yeah. So that's my, that's where my hope comes in. It's like, even if things fall apart with your band and all that stuff, like there is going to be an opportunity when we come on the, when we come through this thing, I don't want to say the other side, but as we get through this thing and we get to where we can get together safely, we're all going to want to get together. We are humans. You, you know. Well, let's pull this all together then Dave. So, yeah. you know, as a band member, you should ask your bandmates, where are we going? As a band leader, mm -hmm. you should have a plan. You, mean, you might want to take input from your bandmates as to where they want to go, but you should have a plan. And I think, again, you probably are going to have to identify the guys who are just really kind of stuck in the panic mode and ask them, what what would it take? Yeah, compassionately. And, I mean, like... Compassionately, like, but yeah. I also think, here's the other side of it, you, you might have to get your head around the point that some guys are not going to be on the same availability Right. Trust, you know, and you may have to decide what to do about that. You may have to decide. And what does that do to the rest of the band? If one of your guys is like, nope, I'm not ready yet, but nine other guys are. And you're like, I don't want to hold back nine guys for one guy. And then the one guy quits. What does that have to do to the chemistry of the rest of the thing? All those kind of oh, very yeah. subtle things. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. And, and you know, it, we've always said that replacing any member of your band is, you know, potentially, can be the, the end of your band, right? Because it changes everything. Well, if what we're talking about here is I'm willing to get together with this band because I trust all these guys. Well, now you're saying, but we're going to replace one of them. And, and this person might to you be a total unknown. So do you trust them? Like you have no reason to, you have no, yeah. there's no relationship You're back to there. square one. Yeah. yeah. So now are the other nine people still willing to get together <laughs> with this, you know, question mark and slot number 10 or question mark in slot number four, if it's a four piece band, like, like the, you know, developing that trust is something you've done over a number of years. I mean, like what the newest guy in your band is, is it still Russ, your, your drummer? Or maybe, yeah. You've, yeah, so, and he's been in the band for several years, right? So, like, you know, there's... Actually, no, we, it, well, we have a, a horn our, player, trom right? our yeah. trombone player who was in the band before Russ then was gone for a while and has come back. I guess technically he would be the latest committed full-time member. But still, but you, he was your, a known quantity. Point still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your it's, point is right. It's, you have a new guy, and it was a big deal when it happened. We talked about it, you know, endlessly here on the show, appropriately so, in my opinion, anyway. And, uh, and yet we may have lost some listeners. I don't know. Uh, I don't think so though. Uh, but you know, he's the newest guy and, and he's not new, not by any stretch. Like everybody in your band, I would assume trusts him as much as they do anybody else because you've all been through it together, you know, many times over. So, so there are three chunks of things that you think about as a band. One is your trust and processes for band-to-band -band relationships, do you yep. do you require tests? I talked to um, some guys in a band that actually is a professional band, touring band, yep. well, mostly in the East Coast, right? And a couple of the band members said, "You know what? We we don't test, but we're we're you know we're older guys, and so we are clean, like I was saying earlier today, yeah. we're keenly aware of the risk we put each other in. So you know we we are in a lot of communication about our lifestyles and what you know what's going on. Sure. Uh, and that's good enough for that band. So anyway, there's the inner band issues. There's the you know cone around the band, the safety issues for the gig you take for the band. 
right? Green rooms, green room security, distance from the stage to the audience. You know, there, there's, you know, a whole bunch of things that you probably want to think about in terms of writers um, that are, you know, just good business COVID business practices. So first it's what is your band to band communication? Second is what is the cone of safety around the band? And then third is like, is important to you, Dave is like, what is the event the you know promoters um, approach to making it a safe environment for for the participants for the attendees of the event. Those three things are kind of the big chunks of things that bands are going to have to work out and get to common uh, agreement as to what. And some some bands might not care what the promoter does with the audience. I I like you. I do. I mean, I don't want to be associated with a thing that's that's not creating right. a safe environment for people to enjoy music. Some people might say a gig's a gig. A someone gig's a gig. It, yeah. If we're okay up here, it's on y'all to figure out if you're okay down there and whatever you choose is okay by us. Right. You know, right. but yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't be my approach, but, but yeah, I, I, I get it. it. Is a, yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's a lot that goes into even for me, you know, answering question number one, am I safe on stage? I, I totally would understand if somebody said like, that's a lot to think about. There's a lot of moving parts there. I'm going to end it there and let other people make that decision for themselves, given the environment they're going to be in, you know, and yeah, I, I get it. Uh, it's not my choice, but th that's okay. Like, like I said, we all find different paths through, like yeah. I could play a gig with that person, right. You know, they, they may not be as concerned with what the crowd is, is subject to, but it's not like they're against the crowd being subject to more safety protocols, you know? So yeah. if I say yes to both that person and I are on the same page, even yeah. though we have different ways of getting there and that's okay. Yep. But the point to all this is that, you know, bands is like, you have to have some idea where you're going. And if, if your collective hive mind is that, well, we're waiting for it to blow over. That's the first thing you got to hold up to the light. What is it? And what does blowing over mean? And um, so this is a plea for the, for our brethren in the music industry to, you know, stay in a state of ready and, you know, do what you've always done, create the opportunities that help keep things moving forward. The world's not going to go to sleep. We're not going to all stay home for, you know, a month or two months. And, you know, until this thing is quote unquote under control, if that would even have happened. And so, you know, we are learning, there's plenty of resources to hear, you know, the state of things where there are hot spots. Uh, you know, but your band, if you want to keep it together, and in the words of the great Steve Van Zandt, a band that works is worth fighting for because it's such a rare thing. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the truth. If you're in a band that truth. clicks and, you know, is good together, it's worth fighting for. And so, you know, getting your hive mind together and saying, you know, here's what we can do. Here's, you know, I, I the, the magic fairy that says it's, it's a magically safe on day X, that's probably not going to be the case. And so, you know, you're going to have to craft your reality that, you know, makes it possible for you to do what you're meant to be doing. So I, yeah, I'll offer a, a, a thought because you, you know, Stephen Van Zandt's right, you know, it, it, that it might be a little bit of a fight and that it might take some effort to roll this particular boulder uphill. Uh, again, it depends on your band. You may all just find yourself in a perfect little, you know, alignment and it's moving forward at a rate that's happy for everybody. If so, f like say thank you to whoever you need to say thank you to and enjoy that. Right. But if you're not in that scenario, it will take some effort. And one of you, it, you know, you talk about if you're a band leader, well, even in a band like, you know, like a fling where there is no specific leader at any point in time one or more of us have been cheerleaders for the band. And, and that's what needs to happen regardless of yeah. what the power structure is in your band. If, if, if it's not moving forward, you need to be a, the cheerleader and it is going to take having those, you know, some tough conversations. My advice is have these conversations with your bandmates individually, especially as you mm. identify which ones are, you know, sort of willing to go with the flow which ones are pushing for it and which ones are pushing against it. Don't call people out in a group. It's not going to be productive. You know, compassion is the key here. We're yeah. all suffering through this in our own ways. So find, you know, find those people, engage with them, talk to them, share your own experiences. 
But it really is going to take some work. And so fight, I mean, a fight's a good word because it, 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 you know, sort of encompasses all of it. But you don't actually want to create a fight, right? Like internal in your band. You just want to, sure. you want to fight for what it is you know your band can be. And sometimes that means, you know, fighting by spending lots of time and listening to your bandmates in one-on-one. And then, you know, and then bring that into the group, you know, and, and say, okay, look, you know. Timmy and I talked and we've got, you know, there's some things here that, that I think are really important to address as a band, but, you know, making sure everybody is, is because that's the only way you're going to get there. It, it, you know, everybody's got veto power on this one. And this is a situation that requires leadership and maybe yeah. your band is made up of all leaders and, you know, everybody's fighting for the band and everybody is sure. equally invested. I, you know, I would say most of the bands that I have heard of, it is the typical mix common, common to any situation that comes up with the band. There's a yep. couple of people that are like, well, let me know where I need to be and I'll be there and I'll be there and you don't That's hear from it. them. And then there's, and there's other people who, you know, know we have to do it this way. You know, I'm not willing to do the work to make it happen that way, but I can identify, you know, the path for you. <laughs> It, yeah. it, it requires leadership, right? And whether it's joint leadership and leadership doesn't have to be just a band leader, No, whatever the vibe of your band is, if you, you know, but, but you need to, you need to keep your feet moving forward. That's, I like, that's I like is. that, that that's definitely going to be the, advance the, the ball, the title, the title of the show. Yeah. Cause it yeah. is about keeping your feet moving for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, that, that's what we do. I mean, what else do we do? I don't know. What else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? Uh, you're mm. either going to do that or you're never going to play again. And I'm, I'm just being, you know, I'm just sort of, I, this is how I, I, I do this for myself, right? It's like, okay, well, we either salvage this thing. We either, you know, I never play with anybody else again, or I find a, a new opportunity to play. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those three, right? <laughs> like there's no, that, that's, that's what it is. So it, as, as you know, Stephen Van Zant said, if you've got a band that works, um, that's the easiest path for you most of the time. Uh, it's also the most noble path. I mean, you've, oh, you've invested yeah. to create something that means something to each other, that yes. means something to the people you play for. Why wouldn't you try and save that thing? I mean, why why wouldn't you do what you can to have the conversations, sometimes co tough conversations? And just a reminder, folks, tough conversations don't have to be end of world things. You can have direct conversation with people and just say, dude, it's not going away tomorrow. So, you know, are you, you really, you, you, you're not going to play until you get a hundred percent guarantee that this thing is gone. That's not coming. Three, four years, <laughs> I, I don't really think it's wait coming. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, it wasn't you there beforehand. I, I mean, I, again, I don't want to minimize the pan, you know, the fact that we're in a pandemic here, but you know, we, we all could have gotten into terrible wrecks on our ways to gigs or our ways home from gigs. Thankfully, most of us have not. Right. Again, I don't, I don't say that to set aside this pandemic here, but, but there are risks that we take. The question is, learning about those risks like we all did when we learned how to drive you know well the unique risk here though dave to be fair is this involves your behavior making other people sick so That's if my true. horn players are to spitting totally stuff true. out into the air you know yeah. projecting no, totally 100 true. feet forward so so these are the things that we all want to you know get our hands on i agree there is no guarantees in life in we life in general that. yeah yeah. yeah, we can use that as a as a foundational encouragement to make decisions in hard times. Yes. But I think the you know the thing here is there is a path through this different than waiting for nirvana. There's a path through this of crafting best practices and you know smart decisions for safety, your safety and those around and those you. And those around you, yeah, for safety. Sure. And you know you can there is there is a path and that's evolving. And you know your advice about you know you can find home tests and you know that's, and we, I think that's it at the end of the day, that's the biggest thing, right? I mean, the more that that testing comes about where you can identify sick people, you, we definitely want to take care of sick people, yes. but I don't think sick, I think by and large, most people don't go out in the day and say, I'm going to, I'm happy to make someone else sick. No. Once you really understand that that's what the, that's at stake. So, yeah. you know, let's hope the testing keeps coming along, but for all our musician brothers and sisters out there, it's, it's a much longer road. It's not going to be a, clean, 
you know, the, one day the skies are going to turn blue and you have to have a plan for where you want to go and, you know, how you're going to keep people together. And it might even be just checking in with your bandmates, you know, how you doing? You know, what are you thinking? Here it is. And, you know, they say, Nope, I'm still engaged. It's just not my time yet. That's good information. That's okay. too, that, it's right? good information. Like you said, he keeps the conversation going. Yeah. And, and then find something else, you, you know, if you can, do a distanced recording together, or like you said, work on a video promo so for your van. Yeah. So, something where it's like, okay, we aren't comfortable playing a gig right now. And, you know, okay, fine. Like, we're going to work on that together, some of us individually, whatever. Okay, fine. Accept it, state it, and then say, but what are we comfortable doing? Can we, you know, can we work on some of those originals that, we, that we've that we had going? You know, can we... Keep people engaged. Yep, keep that's it. Engaged. Keep Keep your band doing something. And that all is, you know, this keep your feet moving thing. So let us know. Like, we've, we've touched on a few things here. We've, I think, we've driven home the point of find some way of keeping your feet slash your band's feet moving. What are the things that you're doing? Tell us feedback at gigabpodcast.com. We would love to, uh, we'd love to hear what you've, you know, what you're doing or what you're inspired to do or what your bandmates are suggesting that you do. And you're trying to figure it out because we can, you know, talk through that stuff too. Maybe we've got some, some advice or maybe you've got some advice that we can share. So, yep, we'll get there. We'll get there and we're all figuring it out, you know, and it's okay that we haven't all figured it out yet. I think that's. Yeah. That's the key. But desiring to get there, I think, is the first thing. That's Instead of just point. waiting to see, yeah, that's I, it. I can't wait to see, man. I it's I I um, it's it's not in me. I got to keep playing. It it drives me. How crazy. many years ago was it that you came out and did that um, late August long weekend with me? Was that three years ago? Oh yeah, probs. Um, yeah. might have been three or four years ago. I want to say yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. I like that. That's good. Think about think about that. If I had that invitation for you now, you'd have to decide to get Ooh, on a plane. Yeah, you'd have to decide who the hell am I playing music with. So I yeah, mean, the, the is thing it you'd worth have to check it? Off for that. Yeah, yeah. it's a whole different decision tree right now. It's not like oh yeah, I'll just book a ticket. That's fine. Yeah, I'm open that weekend. I'm coming. You know that was that that decision I made sitting on my couch, like probably while I was watching TV. Your text came in. You're like, are you open this weekend? I looked. It was what six months out or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm good. You're like, great, come on out. I got I got a couple of gigs. It's like, great, perfect, done. <laughs> it was easy. It was, it was a good weekend, though. We had a lot of fun. It was. It was I enjoyed the heck out of it. I look forward to doing that again, but it probably isn't going to be this weekend. Uh, probably not this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Well, stay warm there. I hope you get another you know blast of, uh, of uh, summer. Do you have... Is there anything with Billy or anything on the books right now that you know that you're going to be going into something? Well, yeah, we've got... Um, we we've got uh, these two sold out shows on Saturday night that uh, nice. we're looking forward to doing. Yeah, yeah, you know it's it's really nice. It's good. And then and Billy seemed to be into some sort of a you know get together and jam and do a keys and drums thing. Which uh, which if 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 we only ever do it for our sanity, that is huge. And I think he's been doing a lot of cool stuff with Ableton and 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 all that too. So he's like, I think there's some fun stuff we could do together. And, and again, yep. it's just, you know, a, it's only two of us that need to be in a room, but it's B it's only two of us that need to be on the same page in terms of, you know, are, are you, are we tested slash comfortable with each other and all of that? Like that yep. it's way easier than five. I, I, I think so. I don't know. And it would be fun. Like I'm like, I'm actually really excited about it. You know, even take pandemic out of it. Like the idea of doing that sounds fun to me. So yeah, yep. good. All right, folks, we will, uh, We'll see you next time. But do send us in your stuff. Feedback at gigabpodcast.com. We want to we want to hear from you too. Always, Always. be performing. Find a way. Keep your feet moving.